Hey, this is Jim. I'm back with Rob. Rob, how's it going? Going good, Jim. Good to see you. How are you? Good, good. It's good to see you. Last few episodes, we talked about international moving. We talked about shipping the containers, leaving the West Coast versus leaving the East Coast timeframes, things like that. One of the things I was wondering about when we're talking about shipping by sea freight, we talked just a little bit about shipping by air. How do you know which one to choose? And is there any kind of lock-in when you choose one or the other, or can you do both? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So basically I don't choose. The client lets me know, you know, or lets one of our shipping specialists, international relocation specialists know what their needs are. And sometimes their need is we haven't even purchased a home in Rome yet. Um, So we're going to ship everything by way of ocean and it can, it can go, it comes down to timing, but sometimes they'll say, I want it there fast. I want this shipment to go quickly. And in that case, I say, okay, air is an option. It's much quicker, orders of magnitude faster. It's significantly more expensive. So you've got the trade-off with ocean. Now, you had mentioned a hybrid. And yeah, I would do that quite a bit, actually. So I'll have certain clients. In fact, I just did one to Africa. Um, going down there for a huge project. And the employer company wants them there like now. And he's like, uh, we're going to have to ship some of this by way of air because I'm not going to be camping for you know, <laughs> 10 weeks. <laughs> I don't want to camp for 10 weeks. And my wife sure as heck isn't going to do that. So <laughs> we're going to ship air and we'll take everything else that's not time critical and we'll put that on the ocean. And we know, and, you know, we'll give them the estimate of how long that's going to take. And in that way, provided everything else is in order, it can still be considered one shipment. And we can avoid having to pay duties, the you know, one time exemption for duties on household goods, things of that nature. Oh, so the two are the two are considered one, even though they're two different types of shipment. We know, yeah, we know how to handle that. Both have to clear customs. There's a customs at the airport and a customs department at the, the ocean port, but we sort of handle that and get get very involved in making sure that that all clears customs as one situation. You had just mentioned a, a client of yours. You know, of course, we're not naming names, but what type of items went on the went on the airplane? It was um, clothing, a lot of clothing, a lot of office supplies, some furniture because they, you know, they wanted some things. Um, evidently, they had housing already and uh, things of that nature. But every client's different, and clients are different. They had they had different priorities in terms of what they want. But clothing and toiletries and shoes and, and office supplies is usually a big one. So for my particular setup, I'm talking to you on a desktop computer now. I've got another one over here. I've got this specially custom uh, table, and it's nice, heavy, and sturdy. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if I was going to Africa or anywhere else, this is, these are among the things that I would need to have access to ASAP as soon as possible. So would you recommend this would go air freight then? It could. It, it, it depends on your budget. It depends how badly you need it and what your budget is because it is significantly more expensive. The delta between the cost of ocean and air is significant. It really is. So, yeah. you know, and I think in, in this case that I just did to Africa, his wife says, I'm not waiting on all my clothes and I can't, I'm not putting that much clothing. I'm not going to put 10 weeks of clothing in check luggage on the plane. And, you know, I've got all kinds of stuff. So it, we're going to need a couple, three pallets worth of items that are going to go. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just, just how it is. But so, like I said, it's usually clothing. Sometimes it's a bed, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So computer equipment, is that, do people usually put, go by air? I guess yeah. if the company's paying for it, why not? It, 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 if it's in the budget for whatever reason and they really need it that quickly, yes, yeah, yeah. sometimes, sometimes. Mm-hmm. I think clothing is really the biggest one, though. The biggest one, yeah. 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 Things like cell phones. You know, you have a plan over here. You arrive over in another continent. Do they do they just stop working? No, they won't stop working, right? I mean, they just pick up the towers over there. I've never yeah, thought about that. That just came. International to mind. SIM card. You get a, get an international SIM card or a new card when you get over there, and then as far as the chargers, they're almost all dual voltage and dual uh, frequency now. 120 versus 240, 60 hertz versus 50 hertz. So they can charge, no problem. It's just going to be a matter of the SIM card. 
Is it I is see. it international ready? I see. And so the the fees and data and all of that are still coming from you. Still have your cell phone plan at least initially. At least initially, like if I, for example, if I were to go overseas, you know, to Germany for six months, I would, may just get a different SIM card and get the international plan by the international plan for my current for my current provider. I might. Yeah. But I think I think you got to look at both and just see what makes the most sense. You know, yeah. if it was a ten, but if it was a permanent move, maybe you know, maybe that would be something I would just change I'd wholesale and make a change. I don't know. Yeah. I just really use their WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. You could use that, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. You could use an app. Yeah, as long as you have internet connection. As long as you've got Wi-Fi. Exactly. <laughs> Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah. As far as moving goes, do you think that most people in 2024, are they making permanent moves? Or are they just moving for work purposes three, four years, and then you think they'll be back? Then, have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I have. I mean, at the end of the day, if I had to just sort of guess, I don't track this with any precision, but if I had to guess, I would say that the intention for our clients, it doesn't always work out that way, but the intention is a permanent move for about 75%, 80% with the balance of 20% being, no, this is going to be a three-year gig, you know, yeah. and those three-year gigs tend to be, you know, big corporations. See, I seem to... Notice a lot of them going to like the UAE, you know, Saudi, places yeah. like that. And like, hey, I'm going to go to Saudi Aramco for two years and then I'm coming back. Okay. Or they've got a gig in the UAE, things of that nature. Um, sometimes Germany, sometimes Canada, you know. Yeah. But I'd say about 75, 80%, I, I believe, if I had to just sort of educated guess, they're, they're per permanent moves. Now, it doesn't always work out that way. I move yeah. a good number of people sometimes. Well, not a good number, but every once in a while, we'll move someone back for whatever reason. Yeah. 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 So, Rob, anybody has any questions, they can reach out to you. Always, always reach out to me. Ask for me if I can pick up that phone. I do. If I can't, I won't. <laughs> That's all I can promise. <laughs> and, and you're there if they have questions about any particular thing, like concern, moving a piano. By the way, just I just want to throw in there. I just learned about a week or so ago that you can't relocate a piano to China. Sure. No, absolutely. You can relocate it anywhere. Caveat being no ivory keys and have ivory keys. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And then and a lot of countries look for that. And like you know, Australia, New Zealand can create a real big problem. But yeah, absolutely. It's great that you have all the information there because getting surprised on the other side in customs would be a nightmare. That That's right. I mean, we don't want that. We want absolutely seamless smooth happy transactions where you know lots of things to think about as i always say when someone's relocating internationally it's not just this is all i think about right <laughs> but this is not all that the client's thinking about they had other things happening and so we want to we try to make this as easy and smooth as possible and trouble free we really do and and to, to Anyone can call me at the, the number, um, my email. I, think, I don't know if you put it on there or not, but it's robert at sdcinternationalshipping.com. I'm always available to work with someone. Great, great. Rob, as always, thanks for your time. I appreciate the information. I know the listeners will. And I'll catch back up with you next week. Sounds good. Sounds good. Have a great rest of your day, Jim. All right. You too, Rob. Thanks.